Welcome to the College Noobcast, a podcast dedicated to informing you about what to expect as you begin your studies in higher education. My name's Corey. I'm Joe. And we'll be your hosts as we explore the campus, meet some students, interview professors, and chat about our own college experiences. Now, please leave your phones on. Yes, food is allowed here. And don't worry, this won't be on the final. This This is is the College College Noobcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the College Noobcast a podcast dedicated to teaching you what college life is like. Uh, I'm Corey McRae, and I'm joined by my co-host and friend, Joe. Why don't you explain yourself, Joe? Why don't you talk about yourself a little bit? I'll do that, Corey. My name is Joseph Cugino, and I am a student here at SUNY Fredonia. We both are video production majors, and it is a good time, good program. Yeah, we both study video production here at the Fredonia campus, and it's a really fun major. I'm really glad I'm taking video production. Yeah, me too. So um, why don't we just hop right into the show and figure out what we're going to be talking about. Well, the normal, the normal way the show would work is I'm doing, uh, Joe and I would do a little intro to the show here, and then we would go right into an interview with someone on the campus to talk about, you know, campus life with people. It's one of those uh, just shows that introduce you to people who are on the campus and uh, get to know what, what it's like being on a campus more, uh, but, but not for this show. Yeah, yeah, any, anyone, because it's a big cultural change to come to college, really. We can have anyone from uh, the quietest of mouse people to uh, people who throw basketballs at walls and call it a rhinoceros. <laughs> yeah, we have pretty crazy characters on campus. Uh, it can be almost a culture shock. Oh, but yeah. after the interview, we would then go to uh, an outro and you and I chat more about what we think about the topics discussed in the interview. But that's not the show today. The show today will actually be just Joe and I chatting about general uh, general things that we've come to learn about college through our own experiences. Uh, next show, the the second episode, we'll actually feature uh, an interview. Uh, I won't say who yet. I'm just going to keep some mystery there. You got to get the people hooked. Yeah, you got to get them hooked on the show. You got to make them think like, hmm, oh, what are they? Who are who, they going to talk to? Ooh, well, we got to come back next for next episode to figure that out. Every time someone thinks, I think in this voice. <laughs> It's a very interesting voice to think in. It is. It's my thinking voice. It's my thinking voice. <laughs> All right, so let's get anyway. right into what this show is about, and we're going to talk about college now. So, Joe, yes. what were your first impressions of college life? Um, Being an adult is weird. Yes, that is very, very true. Uh, Yeah, it's like first impressions of college life. It's like, oh, I have to, I have to get my own food. I have to take care of myself. I am getting myself up in the morning, not Mama. Mama Gugino, bless her heart. <laughs> but I am a terrible, I was a terrible morning person. Uh, college has changed that a little bit. Uh, sometimes my sleeping schedule gets really messed up, but I think college has made me better at being prepared to wake up. Yeah. And stay up. Learning to take control of your life is a really important part of college and It's difficult. Yeah. It's not easy to start, like, creating your own schedule when you're used to mom or dad doing it. And it's it's one of those things that you really, I mean, you hate it. You don't like to do it. But eventually it becomes, things become habitual. Yeah. And it becomes more of a a ritualistic thing that, like, this is my life. This is what I'm doing. I'm finally in control, and I can do whatever I want. Yeah, because, I mean... You can still hate mornings. You can be like the worst morning person. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, I I curse my eight nine a.m. classes, but Oof, those early morning classes. It's like, it, it just kind of got to deal with it. Like instead of instead of throwing a fit, like eh, I don't want to go to class. You just go to class. Come on, you're paying like h- hundreds of dollars. Just do it. Yeah, it's and that's what I started thinking about. Uh, originally, I wanted to skip a class or two, but I started thinking I'm paying for these classes. I, I think really should go exception, to them. Yeah. Some exceptions are necessary, like when you're signing a lease for an apartment or oh, you're yeah. feeling really sick or maybe there's like a huge project that's due and you need to finalize it and touch it up. And this one class, you're just going to be talking about placebos or something. You're like, all right, I can I can skip this class. Yeah. Like it, it, you, once in a while, you need to take a, take you need a, to take a s- hit, take something and like, you need to be able to say, okay, you know, I have something that's way more important 
right now that I need to work on. You need to be able to organize what's important and what isn't important. Yeah. So generally, college life is very interesting. But going off further from the school, yeah, for uh, the meeting, actual like life. meeting people on campus is uh, is very different because it's you, a wild you, experience. Yeah, you're almost forced to do it in school because you're on these same people all the time. Oh yeah. But in college, you you may see someone every so often that you don't yeah. see them all the time. Yeah, I mean, like it's college is like a weird. A liminal state whereas with high school it's like you conveniently deal with these people with college you can and sometimes it's easier than just like having to pull out your phone or whatever and sending a text message it's just like oh hey what's up and that's all you got to do mm-hmm. but you st- it's you still see pe- especially if you have like a smaller campus like we have what four or five thousand people on our campus somewhere around there yeah which is like it, it, that's a big number but there are some campuses that are not that far away from us that have like five times that population oh, it's a, yeah like UB like UB University yeah. of Buffalo is massive they've got like they've got thirty two thousand I believe so like there really is like a whole nother population almost a city or like a big town yeah it's huge whereas with some campuses, it's almost like not different from high school at all. Yeah. Ours is like a, a nice in the middle. Yeah, like you a, see you see familiars, world. but it's not like you're seeing the same people all the time. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know half the kids in my grade at all. <laughs> yeah, me neither. Uh, I, I try I try to remember faces and I try to remember names, but there are so many people. Yeah, and it's like. It's not that obvious nowadays uh, when you're like in between the ages of 18 and, like, 20. It's sometimes hard to tell when someone's older than you and younger than you. Yeah, and in a way, that's good. Yeah. It's really, you're less graded. Because in school, you're in grades. Pretty much everyone you know in your grade is your age. Everyone looks pretty much the grade that they're in. Mm -hmm. Like, you can tell a ninth grader from a 10th grader from an 11th and a 12th. Yeah, and in the real world, you start to realize, I don't need to segregate my friends in the age groups. Yeah. Like, I can have, like, we have friends who are seniors. We have friends who yeah. have graduated already. We have super senior friends. Oh, it's great. It's awesome. And there's so many people, and they know more about college than we do. And yeah. they're able to actually almost be mentors for us. They can pretty much guide us through the college way. Yeah, I definitely agree. Which is uh, also what we're kind of doing right here on the yeah, show right now. We're kind of doing that, too. Bam. But to a uh, to a much more anonymous, large audience. Yeah. Did we explain that we're sophomores? We're sophomores. I didn't think we explained. No, yeah, yeah, we're we two never... years into college. I think we've had enough spe- experience in college already. To like to tell about it. Yeah. And like something that specifically for sophomores that I feel like they don't really get a lot of attention for is like there are a million things for freshmen, and that's important. Freshmen oh, yeah. need to have like support for going into college, and there is the senior stuff that's just like. Push it for an extra six months. But for sophomores who are kind of like in the middle of it all, they're not new to college, but at the same time, they're like, oh, God, what do I do now? Because I remember when I was first mm-hmm. starting off as a sophomore, I was freaking out because oh yeah, there are people younger than me and a lot of the older people graduated that I was friends with. I mean, not a lot of them, but some of them. And... You know, you're you're back from summer break and you're thrown into this heavy workload and maybe you're like, maybe you're spending too much time with certain people, not enough time with others, and you're trying to balance that. And it's like, oh God, how do I do this? Oh yeah, and that's another thing about college is there's definitely stresses that come with just leaving home and coming to a new environment. And like, you do that the first time and you're like, I want to say prepared for it, but some people it's like, oh yeah, I'm away from my home. This yeah. is awesome. But then when you go back home and you reflect on your time in college and you kind of think about it and then you come back, it's not always exactly the way you remember it. You, for, you tend to forget the not so great things, the not so bad things, and then they just become more apparent in your life. And you're like, oh, this is a little more weight. Yeah, it's like it, that's really weird for me when I first came to college. Uh, I had been very nervous. I've been excited and nervous at the same time. I, I lived in a very close family, Yeah, six of us, uh, my mom, my dad, my three brothers. And we all we were all a really close family. I was excited to leave the college, but at the same time, I was very nervous that I was going to miss everyone. I wasn't going to be able to handle being on my own. And I've talked with you about this yeah. countless times. Lots of times. But, uh, you know, for the audience, I might as well, you know, reiterate myself. Uh, and for the first couple of days, I was not panicky, but I was... In a very uncomfortable situation. 
uh, and it was only after those two days I started meeting people. The freshman dorms have their little like their little get together, their meeting parties where you get to meet new people. And that's actually where I met you, Joe. Yeah, that's where we met. Yeah, we were like we're both filmmakers. We're both from Syracuse, and we we're like, wow, this is awesome. Really we cool. talked about cameras. We talked about directing and stuff like that. Oh yeah, it was great. Camera. Oh, you lo- you love the tech stuff. Yeah, I no. love the. The, the more creative side. I, guess, I yeah. mean, I like I like the creative side as well a lot. I'm a creative writing minor, but oh God, does the technology just make me uh, excited. Anyways, we're going on a tangent. Yeah. Uh, I was, uh, for the first two days, very, very nervous about college life. But after the two days and I met people, I started going, you know what? I really like being on my own. This is actually extremely too. fun. And it's so much fun to the point now where I actually call home. Home is my college dorm. Yeah, I say that too. Like, yeah, hey, let's gonna, go back home. We're going to go home. We're going to go back to our college dorm. It's where we live now. And then much. once we get to the apartment, it really will be like our home. Yeah, next semester we're actually living off campus. We're super excited about that. Yeah, high five. So uh, after that, uh, I've, it's weird going home now, actually. Cause, uh, and I mean home back in where back my where family lives. Yeah. Back, I live in Syracuse. So it's really weird going back to Syracuse because all of a sudden I don't, really feel like I live in that house anymore. I'm like a oh, no. guest for like a week I, or two. I feel like I live in my house. Do you? Okay. Yeah. Maybe like, it's just me. It's just, it depends. And you know it's different from person to person. You also move around a lot. You're you're used <laughs> oh, to like yeah. different locations and I've stuff like that. I've moved around I, yeah. I've had the same house since I was like three years old. Yeah, yeah. It's like like yeah. a lot, like sometimes that house changes, but the, the general the general thing is still the same. Mm-hmm. So that, it's cool to be back home and, uh, Something like something that's pol- like p- like polarizes Corey and I is that like Corey comes from a very close family, and I'm not saying this to say that I hate my family or anything or we don't get along, but like we're not nearly as close. Like everyone's kind of doing their own thing at any given time. My mom is probably doing stuff with like my littlest brother with sports or whatever. My dad's mm-hmm. probably working. My middle brother is probably hanging out with his friends or doing some sort of like club work or whatever. I'm. Nowadays, when I'm home, I'm just sort of like hanging out, watching stuff, and playing video games. Yeah, it's very different. It's dependent on or what family you're friends. coming with, yeah. what family you come from, because you know it. it it's very dependent so it's, on where you come from and how you're going to experience the college campus. Yeah. So it's like when I came to college, it wasn't that not being with my family was that jarring, but at the same time, I definitely noticed when. You really have to be close to the people you're living with because you're literally like 10 feet of proximity at all times. <laughs> yeah, you're like invading their space. And they're invading yours. Yeah, it it, it can be that way, you know. It can. But heads, ha- it happens. It happens. I mean, I know uh, I know uh, my friend RJ who lived across the dorm from Jonah and I. Yeah. He had a bit of a... He had, he a bit had of problems a, with his roommate. Yeah. And I don't want to name names. I'm not going to throw last names anywhere. But no. You know, he he wasn't. He and his roommate had a little bit of beef like with each other. A couple qualms, but it it wasn't anything bad. But I definitely do know a lot of people who absolutely hated their roommate. Yeah, they could not deal with it. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to specify too much stuff too. But uh, I can definitely say that my roommate and I were probably not going to get along much well after our freshman year. Oh yeah, we yeah. Had, we have different priorities. Yeah, and it's no it's no one's fault no. in particular usually. It's usually either, you know, something didn't quite match up and the chemistry between the two of you isn't very good. Uh, once in a while, you get someone who is an absolute jerk. Oh. And I'm glad I have, I've never had that kind of roommate. I think I got really lucky that both of my roommates, both Jonah and Steve right now, have been very considerate roommates. They're really nice and they're really, they're willing to talk and, you know, work things out if there's a problem. Oh, yeah, totally. I know with, um, it's like my roommate freshman year was not, was not like a terrible person to live with but they 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 had different ideas of how to manage their space which sometimes like invaded mine as in a lot of times it invaded mm-hmm. mine and you know they they were very I feel like the best way to describe it I don't know if you've seen the types of roommate situations of in college humor it's like a little yeah, nine yeah. page graph we were definitely the jock versus the jock and the nerd living together yeah. where he was like, you know, blaring his music and going to parties and having people over all the time. And I would just kind of like stay in my room and watch anime. That's basically how it went. Yeah. I mean, like I'd hang out with people too, but when I wanted my alone time, I would like my alone time and not barge into the room with nine unfamiliar faces. Yeah. And I get that. That's like probably one of the reasons why we're good friends with each other. Yeah. Because we both appreciate personal space in the long time. 
And when we have people over, generally speaking, we know them, so it's not a big deal. Yeah, it's not like we're going to invite people who invite people who will then invite their people. Yeah, it's like every other week, there is just some f- random person in my room like, oh, hello, I don't know you, but you're sitting on my bed. That's cool. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's but, it's a lot of management. Communication is very important. It's very important. So let's actually move on to some other topics before, you know, we just waste a the whole, whole hour just talking about one thing. Ah, there's so much to talk about. And I'm hoping in, like next episodes, like future podcasts, we'll be able to delve very deep into other stories that we have. Oh, that'll yes. be just fun talking about that. Uh, Which so I have plenty of. What is different from high school? What Between college and high school, what are some big key differences? This kind of goes into the other topic as well. I would say with college, you don't take as many classes and you're not trapped in class as long as you are with high school on average. Uh, yeah. But the workload is significantly higher. Like mm-hmm. you're, you might not be, you, for some people it's like, you know, you're in class for 50 minutes every three days of the week or sometimes it's like 90 minutes every two days. I know for some people that's a hard transition, but I come from a high school life where every class is 80 minutes. Mm-hmm. So that. That didn't throw me off as much, and it's pretty much the same thing right here. You know, for me, it wasn't actually so bad. I come from a high school that did, like, the 45-minute yeah. classes, and really, it, the 45 minutes to an hour is not difficult at all. It's not difficult at all. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes you have an hour and a half, two and a half hour classes here. Yeah, the two and a half hours tend to take more energy out of me, but the hour and a half, whatever. Yeah, but you, you start getting used to it. It becomes less of, you know, you waiting for the clock. an hour and a half to get down uh, because the teachers are pretty good at managing yeah. that hour and a half, two and a half hours. Uh, it just all depends on the day you take it. Because we here at Fernonia do um, the Monday, Wednesday, Friday classes yeah, and then like, Tuesday, Thursday. And sometimes Monday, Wednesdays. Yeah. It's sometimes just Friday. Sometimes which just is Friday. what I'm taking next semester. Oh. I'm taking one class next semester that's just on Fridays. And because it's an art class, you need uh, some extra time in there to get to three credits. So I have to take a class from 9 in the morning until one forty. Yeah. which is almost five hours. Uh, I would actually say that Fredonia is probably, probably the easiest kind of managing that people can do because I know some of my friends from other schools are in class for like six hours. Yeah. Day. It's like, oh. oh, God, geez. Cannot manage that. Like, but, uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, I could not. I'm not excited for that kind of management. No. But I'll I'll be able to figure it out. It's the only class I have on Friday. Yeah. So that five hour class won't really be too much of a hassle when I already have, you know, classes back to back that are mm-hmm. pretty much five yeah. hours. My Tuesday this semester. Thursdays are basically high school because uh I'm in class from nine thirty to four twenty. Mm-hmm. So there is a lot of uh a lot of times when I want to eat and I can't or I need to go to the bathroom, can't do that either. Yeah. And then, and another thing that's very different from high school, which I thought is very, very important to mention, is periods. There's no such thing as periods in college. No, yeah, I mean, there's block scheduling for some high schools, which is what I had. So like periods one, two were basically class one, three, four, class yeah. two. College, it's like your class is your class. Yeah, and they time the teacher schedule the teacher can schedule it whenever. Yeah, and it's basically the teachers, the teachers' mercy to schedule when they want to do their classes and you have to be able to find times where you can do one of the classes that they schedule. And for whatever reason, depending on your department, a lot of teachers like a 930 to 1050 or a 1030 to a 12. And it's your mm-hmm. it's up to you to uh determine what classes you need them that semester. Yeah. That's at least at Fredonia though. At least at Fredonia. I don't know about other colleges because I know some colleges have more faculty for their uh classes than we do. Mm-hmm. We are very unique because sometimes we have bigger classes, like upwards of 100, 200 people for the bigger lecture halls. But we we are very much like a high school in the sense that you know pretty much every one of your classmates, at least by face. Oh, yeah, it's very nice. We're at a small campus that allows that kind of interaction yeah. between students and teachers even. Like past freshman year, I don't think I've ever been in a class more than like 40 people. It's very nice, yeah. Like, on average, it's like 20, 25. And yeah, the professor even, gets to know you by name. And you know what's great is the further you go through your major and the more specific you start getting, the even smaller the classes get and you start actually learning who the teacher is and getting to know them on a personal level. Oh, yeah, it's great. Like, Roz, like, she's she's really fun to talk to. She's a yeah. great personality. And uh, I just love chatting with her after class. Yeah, it's great. And definitely she's able to, you know, 
after after class is over, she's able. This is for a video class. She's actually, you know, able to sit down and talk one on one with us about the projects that we're doing. Give us some critiquing, and you know, some of the stuff you can give or take. But it all depends on you know how you see the video, or this is for filmmakers. How we how we decide we're gonna work. Yeah, it's but like it's really fun being able to actually know a teacher on a personal level like that. It's like with my creative writing professor, like we're really cool and we talk about like stuff or whatever, like in between classes. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's pretty funny because he doesn't drive to campus because he lives right across. Oh, does he? Yeah. So, you know, one time when we were talking about a project or whatever before spring break, I was like, when he told me to have safe travels or whatever, I was like, meet you too. I'm like, well, I mean, it shouldn't be that hard. And he's like, yeah, no, I'm just right above the street. I'm just going to walk home. You know, stuff like that. And your t- professors can be really honest with you, too. And that's what I like about it. Mm-hmm. That's well, another they nice thing. Care. Some of them don't. Some of them are not the greatest people mm-hmm. when it comes to their student-teacher relationships. Mm-hmm. And I'm not even talking, like, on an unethical like level. They're just kind of, they just don't care as much. Yeah. But a lot of professors I have, what I have experience with really do care about what they teach. Like, very much so. Oh, yeah, that's very nice. Is as soon as you get into college, these people, they had to work for these degrees to be able to teach college students. Yeah. And you can tell these are people who, like, this is what they really wanted to do. They, they really, really wanted like to teach, yeah. So you get people like, I don't know, you can you can just tell uh, Kayak loves loves teaching production. Oh, yeah. He, he's worked at NBC. He's got so much background, and we're so, we're so well, video majors, and, you know, you being a television broadcast major, uh, fiction broadcast oh, fr- concentration. Okay, fiction, fiction and broadcast. But you doing broadcasting? I'm you're doing able broadcast to, first, my junior year. You're able to get a lot of interaction of with like, him yeah, and actually learn a lot from a guy who's worked in the business, which is awesome. Yeah. So, uh, and uh, another thing we we should probably mention is um, scheduling for your classes. Oh yeah. You you schedule your classes. The first semester here for us, they actually gave us they a gave schedule. us a schedule. But by the time, uh, by the time after your freshman, your first freshman year, it's all on you. Oh yeah, after midterms, you have to come up with your own schedule, and you have to know what classes when you want to take. They they don't help you with that. If you if you don't know your schedule going into these advising meetings for your next semester, they're gonna they're gonna say come back with a schedule. Yeah, it's like I know a lot of people hate hate their advisors because they don't lay it all out for them. And that's why my advisor specifically, a lot of people tend to not care about too much. But I've never had a problem with them because I always have my schedule and like a couple backups planned out. Because, you know, I, I, a lot of the time I ske- help schedule with my mom. But now it's just more me looking at what I have to get done mm-hmm. and crossing off stuff. And then I review it with my mom. I'm like, hey, mom, this, I got this going on. She's like, that's great. And then uh, my advisor sees it and he's like, that's great. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, yeah. I actually had a bit of difficulty with it at first. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not extremely well organized. Uh, you can with my scheduling and stuff like that. Yeah. I'm usually, I've been a person throughout high school who does things last minute. Like if something pops up, I'm like, oh, I'll just do it right now and whatever, yeah. or I won't worry about it. And you know, I'll ask to, you know, can I hand this in late? And usually they'll say yes. But in college, it's very different. They they really are on a schedule and if you you can't hand things in late here you so, can't really know it's even like with advising world. yeah it's like very like the real world if you miss a deadline for a, a video or you're something gonna be pretty you're gonna be hit pretty hard yeah, if you break a contract doing something like that you're gonna lose money yeah you're gonna lose money you're gonna lose repu- 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 yeah, credit, yeah. That sort of yeah your thing. reputation will be very hurt so i've learned that i so slowly even with filming uh, with my major, I have to be more and more proactive with what I'm doing, how I'm scheduling my, my classes. It used to be that, like, oh, I have advising at 9 a.m. this morning, so I, I, I'm up at 8, and I'm, like, yeah, I always putting together up, my schedule as fast as possible. I always get up an hour before anything I need to be ready for. Yeah, so I've actually learned that, you know, my advising meeting this time, I knew what day it was going to be. I scheduled all my classes a week in advance. I knew exactly what I wanted to do, and it actually gave me time to correct anything that I possibly. I actually did that a month before advising. Yeah, even you being more proactive—that's yeah. that's good on you, man. I like 
I like being organized. Oh, yeah, and definitely that's something that I've learned to do. So if you're not organized, you can definitely learn to be organized. Oh, it's a yeah. bit It's a bit of work, but... It's a bit of work, but it's an invaluable skill. Oh, yes, very. <laughs> I don't know where People, I would be if I didn't learn how to organize. Especially in our industry, if you're organized and you got everything together, you will get a job. People will like you. Yeah, yeah. And that can be said for anything, like accounting, business, science. If you've got your stuff together and you can make yourself like presented well, mm-hmm. you're you're a valuable asset. Yeah, because if you have organized if you have things organized, you're able to quickly pull up information that I need. You're able to very you just look clean. Yeah. If you've got or you're not, you know, scrambling for information, you're able to calmly do what they ask you to do and they know that they can trust someone like that. And how how one goes about doing that is also Whatever really works, there isn't one particular way to be really well organized. Some of people really like physical organization, like yeah. you know, they pin up schedules to their to their desks, or they have like calendars that they pull out and then they write on. I'm a, I'm a very digital person in my workflow. Like I I use Google Calendar and Google Tasks, and oh, yeah, that's yeah. how I organize my schedules and homework and stuff like that. I've actually started using the uh, the calendar app on my iPhone yeah. to schedule important dates, and I set reminders for myself. Yeah, it's a very important yeah. uh, it's a very important skill to be able to. It does like I said, it doesn't matter how you do it; you just need mm-hmm. to do it. Yeah, if you have your iPhone or you have an Android phone, or something like, like that, it. you need use that to your advantage. Or yeah, any other like are incredible. Yeah, anything that you can really you know. It notifies you. It tells you when you need to do things. It's usually very reliable. Oh, yeah. No, it's like the only time it's not reliable is when you enter it in wrong. There is a little bit of human error involved. Yeah, yeah. But um, generally speaking, uh, since using my phone to uh, organize homework and uh, homework and classes and stuff like that, I have rarely turned things in late or have rarely skipped, like, missed class. Mm Mm-hmm. It happened more my freshman year, but uh, never have I gone above the skip limit. I sometimes don't even hit the skip limit mm-hmm. for some classes. Yeah, I know. I actually had a wake-up call my first semester. I've told you about this for uh, communication orientation. Oh, yes, that's right. Uh, it was w- it was before I started really being an organized person. Yeah. I was really – I was missing stuff all the Left time. Right. I – I wasn't late to the class. I always made it to the class like on, on time. time. I was pretty good being there. But um, if there was something that was due, I, I usually had no idea. I wouldn't. Yeah. I would I didn't have the motivation to check. That's I would think thing. in my mind. Your syllabus I, is your friend. Yeah, I would think in my mind. I need to check. Uh, I didn't really look at my syllabus too much, unfortunately. Like key key part in uh, doing college right. Look at your syllabus. <laughs> Don't throw it away. Yeah, yeah that's things super important. If the professor asks you to have the syllabus on the first day and it's on a Dropbox or whatever, print it out. Yeah, usually keep it. very important dates and information are on the syllabus. Now, keep in mind, the syllabus is not set in stone. The yeah, professor yeah. can change it at any point, but keep that in mind and write it down. Yeah, and I was, uh, you know, I had no motivation to check, unfortunately. I don't know what it was about me. I knew, I was thinking to myself, I, I should check. I should check what's on the syllabus. I should make sure... But then I'd get distracted, and I'd be like, you know what? I, this, is, this is college in my freshman year. I can probably slack it off a little yeah. bit. No, no, I failed that class. I failed a, like, it, it wasn't even a 101 class. It was like, it was pre- like 100, yeah. 101 classes. And yeah. for those of you who don't uh, really know about the 101s and the numbers, uh, usually uh, grades of difficulty are graded on what level of 100 they are. So 100s are usually freshman classes. They're very easy classes. Upper classes become 200 level, 300 up to 400 level. And depending on what kind of college you go to, I think that may change. I think yeah. you may have 500. 500s are generally grad programs. Yeah, so. I don't I don't know if the, those are too common, but uh, usually the higher the 100. For, for four-year students, 500s are not a common thing. Yeah, and if you're a freshman, you probably shouldn't be taking a 300 no. or 400 level class. That's not to say that all 300s and 400s are like, you know, hard as hell or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, usually they require prerequisite they requir- classes they requ- too. They require prereqs so you're a little more prepared, but sometimes it, it's 
it's not so much difficulty, but time management and workload. Yeah, but like backing up a yeah. little bit, backing up a little bit to where I what I was talking about about your uh, calm uh, yeah about my calm class. Uh, I knew it was it was an easy class. It was a 100, 101 class or something like that. It could have even been a, like a pre college class. Oh, it was pretty much just meeting the staff. Yeah, that's how simple this class was. This class and, really could have been done. In like four days, if we had met, if it was longer than yeah, 50 minutes. but uh, it was something I just thought wasn't important, and I don't know. I if I was, you know, if I could go back in time, I'd shake myself, just like get like, the class, scare myself. I'd wake myself up in the morning and go, listen to me, organize yourself, look at your schedule, do do the work, do it, go. And uh, I I ended up because I missed a couple assignments and I missed a big. I missed a big essay in that class. Uh, yeah. I ended up failing it. I, I went below the 60, and um, I needed to be above that 60 to pass the class in my major. Don't you need to be, at least for us, do you need to be above a 70? Uh, no, for us, it's uh, for the film majors in your department, uh, It's you got to be up above a 60. Okay, at least for comm orientation? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, so usually for your major, you have to be up above a specific level to be able to stay in the major, whereas other for people... For Fredonia, it depends. Most of the time, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is for video production, you have to be a C for your minor to D. Yeah, something like that. If you're not in the major, you don't have to be at a C level to pass. But if you're in the major, you do. And that may change very, very... It may vary yeah, uh, over no the course of different majors. Yeah, no colleges are the same. Some colleges majors. don't even have gen ed. Yeah, which is, weird. Which is I wish I was Ugh. at that college. Gen ed isn't fun, but... Getting out of the way is nice. Yeah. Knowing like your freshman year, you pretty much just, all right, I'm going to do a bunch of CCCs, maybe a couple classes in my, in my major because I want to graduate. Uh, but I ended up failing communication orientation, and I got a letter that said, if you fail this class again, you will be kicked out of this major. You will be fired from the comm department. And I think that was my big wake-up call. I was like, okay, I really need to focus and organize and not fail another class. And you know what? I didn't. Yeah. I didn't fail any other classes after that. And actually, I'm riding pretty good. I got A's. Yeah, I'm pretty I'm sure I'm an A-B well. student right now. So I'm really glad I you know, buckled my belt a little bit and I think um, hiked up my pants and was like, all right, time I to be an adult. I would say, like, on average, naturally, I'm a B student. And when I say naturally, I mean, like, putting in the correct amount of work a student should be putting in. So, like, as as in doing your work mm -hmm. and studying when you need to study. I'm, like, naturally a B student. I'm trying to push myself to be more of an A student because I don't know what it is about college. Maybe it's not as competitive as my high school. Not to say the college isn't competitive, because it is, oh, naturally. Yeah, yeah. By nature, it's competitive. But uh, my high school was just super competitive, and I hated that. And it made me not want to, like, work as hard, because it's just it's just a mentality that stressed me out too much. Kind of like a why even try? Yeah, basically. Mm. And it's so, like, with college, maybe it's because I've got more riding on this. Maybe it's because I'm surrounded by people who are... Who have a similar goal in mind and it's more than just something we have to do and those are air quotes right yeah there. air quotes the half <laughs> air quotes half air quotes um but and maybe some people are like yeah i got like a 3.7 a 4.0 last semester and it's like well damn i want to do that yeah so this semester i've been buckling down and i've been like like b is my absolute minimum right now and i'm really trying to shoot for a's yeah, really get like those A's. Like, really trying to shoot for A's. And it's, it feels good yeah, it when really you does. get those A's and you see your report card and you're like, yes. damn, look yes. at me go. Look at me go, are son. Are midterms in? Huh? Are our midterms in? I believe they are, yeah. I'm going to have to check those. So, um, I probably have a lot speaking, of speaking, going back to talking about classwork and homework, uh, you know, we, we do get uh, quite a bit of homework oh, yeah. in college. For some, it's not as much, but, like, yeah, we get homework. It is... Uh, it can be stressful. I mean, me, be, me in my freshman year, I, I know I was sometimes staring at my schedule and I know I have to do homework, but I'm wasting my time thinking, how am I going to get all this homework done? Yeah, it's hard. You got to, that's why I use like Google tasks to make a list of like stuff I got to do and when it's, mm -hmm. when it's due. In fact, I actually have a book in my pocket, Angels in America, that I need to read three acts of before Tuesday. And uh, I plan on doing that right after this podcast. Oh, yeah. You're going to, like, kind read, of break yeah. it up a little bit. I'll probably read, like, it'll probably go, like, 
Acts 1 and 2 today, Act 3 tomorrow, and then, you know, Tuesday I'll be all prepared. Mm -hmm. That's like the kind of structuring that I plan on doing. Because I know I know a ton of people who push things to like the last minute. And sometimes that's how they work. That's how they work best, under yeah. stress, under like pressure. I am not that kind of person. I absolutely notice a degrade in quality if I don't dedicate a decent amount of time to something before it's due. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know I definitely I definitely do work well under pressure. But you know, it, there's a there's a point. There's yeah. a line where it's way too much pressure and I can't do it. Oh yeah, no. So it's kind of riding a riding a the middle of the road almost. You're on a very tight a tight thin rope. rope, I guess. However you're going to say the say the phrase. But um, wire. I do know that I have to regulate how I how I do my work. Yeah. Cuz I'm a person that works well under pressure and I usually the way I organize my schedule is I'm supposed to do the most important the most important thing I should be working on right now. So something that's due soon is very important. So yeah. if I know I've got an essay that's due in a couple months, I know maybe not a couple months. I don't think that long. Like but a couple a, weeks. A couple weeks you have to work on an essay. I know I can schedule and plot out when to do the important thing, but it's going to happen in a course of like, all right, I'm going to do a little bit now. I'm going to do a little bit down the road. As it gets closer, I'm going to work more heavily yeah. on it. But I know if I've got something to do tomorrow, if i got like a math assignment like that I'm a supposed to be thing. doing. Yeah, if I've got a video that I'm supposed to be edited, like example, Tuesday is when our- Our thing is due. I think our uh, video is due for our video class. I know I'm going to be editing that very often. I I think I'm done with the editing now. I just need to do that stupid production notebook. <laughs> well, I, I know I have to. I'm probably, after this podcast, going to start working on that. Yeah. But Monday, Monday, I believe I have uh, some classwork due. I might even work on that before I do, even do the video because I know it's due tomorrow. And I have yeah. Monday to work on some stuff. So it's all about basically scheduling out uh, what's important, when to do it, and um, even write, you know, like keeping a planner on yourself. Yeah. Because they give you planners in high school, and they actually give you planners here. But I, I would suggest buying a bigger planner, one that actually can fit all of your work. Like a like an agenda thing? Yeah, like a big agenda book. Because the ones they give you are tiny. I don't use them. I just yeah. use my phone. Or, or Yeah, use yeah. your phone, because your phone technically doesn't have... It has unlimited space for Basically, everything. Basically, for, for, our, for our intensive purposes, purposes, it's got unlimited space, and it has a ton of... You don't ever have to worry about the actual physical size of it. Mm -hmm. If you have like, if you're like me and you have just bubble terrible space wasting handwriting. Yeah. And you know, I think one of the things to talk about too is that teachers don't know how many classes you're taking. Yeah, no. So it, it's not like they're gonna think, okay, you know, I gotta, I can't do too much. I can't give these kids too much homework because they're taking a lot of classes. Well, I know some people are taking four classes, five classes. Just, you know, very few like classes. Like the normal ones. Yeah, normal classes. Some people are, like, taking, I don't know, I think some can take three classes even. I think if the credit hours add up to, like, 12, it's full-time. Yeah, as so long as they're taking... you can take, like, two, three credits and a four credit, and you're a full-time student. Yeah, but there are also, you know, kids who are taking 18, 20 credits. Yeah. And um, they their teachers don't know that they're taking those credits, so no. they're going to schedule homework like, like whatever. They, yeah, they like don't... whatever's most convenient for them. Yeah, so I've got one teacher, my art teacher, she has us do, you know, we have sketchbook assignments. We have so, so many sketch, like five sketches, preliminary sketches, before we even start working on something. That's a lot of sketching. And yeah. they have to be specific, they have to be specific sizes, and they have to have specific requirements. Like we're working with shapes right now, shapes and colors right now. So I'm supposed to sketch out some shapes and shade them to determine what color I'm going to be using for each like block in the yeah. shape. And that's a lot of work. And I have to figure out how I'm going to be able to manage doing all that on top of the editing I have to do for my video class, the math that I have to do for my math class, uh, just uh, the work I'm doing for my audio production class. It's a lot of it's it can be a lot of work and it can be stressful but and part of it comes to the fact that your cover a lot of classes cover a great deal of material in the span of 3 to 4 months. Like my American Identity yes. class is basically like an English class. And like I lo English. I love that. Yeah. That it's so much information and you can just pack it into a little time. Because, you know, it's not like high school where you're teaching like a wide gambit of kids who Either like you know get the material right away, or some kids that just take forever to mm -hmm. uh, to internalize it. In college, everyone's minimum age is eighteen. And maximum is probably like twenty-two, but that doesn't really matter. The minimum is eighteen. You're an adult. 
you can probably be expected to get work done on a quicker level than a high school student or a middle school student. Mm-hmm. And because of that, like take my American Identities class, which is basically like an an English class, mm-hmm. like in terms of its structure. We read five books, I think. Yeah, five books in the span of four months. For some people, they can't even read an, an they can't be bothered to read an, a book for English in three months. Yeah, like one book. And in this class, you're reading five. So Jeez. you're reading like, and they're not like sh- some of them are short. They're not short books. These are like dense novels and sometimes graphic novels or plays. Yeah. And Take Angels in America. It's yeah, right Angels in your pocket. Angels in America is like the two part edition. It's like above 300 pages. Yeah, it's massive. And, and you're, reading, you're reading that in like two weeks. Yeah, you're reading that. And then on top of that, there are more books that you've read already, aren't oh, there? Oh, yeah, no. Like a lot of, most of the books have not gone above 400 pages, thank God. But like it's around 250 yeah. each book. And you're reading them in the span of like, Two three weeks. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of work. It's time management, yeah, basically, and that's basically co- what college is teaching you how to do, is because once you leave and your mom and dad aren't making your schedule anymore, you just got to do it. You have to manage your own time. You have to figure out what you want to do. And I think college is actually a great segue into that kind of you know living on your own. Oh yeah. Well, you have to manage you know things here. You're gonna have to manage everything. Yeah. Uh, outside of college, after in your real job, so um. All right, you know, we've talked a lot about, about time you know, college, time management, workload, stuff you have to do in the class. Why don't we talk about the relaxation, you know, just and the release. How to how to, you know, have a good time on campus. Yeah. And basically, um like what is let's talk about what is what is the party kind of scene party like scene? on campus cuz I know a lot of people out there like parties. Yeah, a lot of people in the associate college, they associate it with the parties. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one of the biggest questions is is this campus I'm going to a party campus? Is uh, it, does it have a lot of? Is it a good party place? Yeah, and that's that is important for like a stress relief kind of thing. Oh yeah. But yeah. I think some people go way too overboard, and some people associate par- college and partying too closely, and that interferes with schoolwork. Like the whole purpose yeah, yeah. of being here, but party life. Specifically, our campus. If you're looking for it, it's good. Yeah, Fredonia. You know, Fredonia has its own party life. It's a Pretty big, I'd say, when it comes to partying yeah. for a small campus. That we've is. got a lot of. I know kids who. Well, I know some of my friends. A lot of my friends who go to colleges that have, that have no fraternities. Like yeah. fraternities are not a thing. Mm-hmm. Fraternities and sororities. We've got like what seven. Oh, we've got of them. A, I can't we've even got a tell decent you. amount. We got a lot. And like, if you have, if you've ever been to like a frat house or like a sorority house, it's they can be pretty wild because it's a bunch of young people who have no hold to no restraints just doing whatever the hell they want. Mm-hmm. And that can be dangerous in and of itself and can lead to a lot of mistakes. Please, please think about things before you do that. Oh, yeah. You got to be careful. You know, we could we could do the whole safety thing like, you know, watch your drink, always go with a buddy. Yeah. You know, make sure that you know. Think about what you're posting before you post it. Oh, yeah. All that kind of stuff. But you have definitely been out to a lot more parties on campus than oh, I yeah. have. Oh, yeah, I have experience with I'm that. a little less, you know, I mean, I'm a little less like, party. I'm not big into that scene. But I guess, you know, a really good question for you is how do you how do you manage uh, going to a party? How do you figure out, like, what party you should be going to? And if you're in a party, like, how are, how are you making sure that you're okay and that you know you're going to be fine and just have a good time? Uh, the wonders of technology are incredible these days, but it also helps to know some people who have been around here for longer. One thing I think that helps a lot of students into determining what parties to go to, first off, like if they're going to be dangerous or whatever, is to just like, if you have upper friends, ask them like, hey, is this like a, uh, is this a sketchy frat? Is this place, you know, is this a good, safe place? Like, is there going to be a lot of people here? Uh do these people have a reputation of like spiking their drinks or something like that? Oh, do you? Yeah. Don't um, want, don't want that. And like, it's a serious topic, but you have to confront it because mm-hmm. especially if you're like, I mean, I don't want to like stereotype or anything, but if you're a woman, you really have to be careful when you go to like these big parties. Yeah, it's really, it's, it, it's no joke at all. No, it, people, it's very serious. People will take advantage of you. And I know as much as we don't want to... Uh, we don't want to, like... As much as we don't want to stereotype things, you know, say, you know, men are also victims, women can be victims. It's no... It's no, like... 
Men get drugs too. Yeah, it's no joke. Fact. And um, it's actually, you know, this fact that numbers show that women have, women are very uh, susceptible. Not susceptible, well, I want to say, but like, okay, uh, you know, there a lot more women get taken advantage of than men do. Yeah. And it's not susceptible. That's a wrong word. Uh, you you got to be at careful risk. out there, ladies. Yeah, at risk would probably be a better one. Mm-hmm. So basically, just make sure you know. Make sure you where know where you are going. Um, when you go there, always go with a friend. Don't go to a party yeah, alone. That's a very important one. Um, have like if you're using a car, have a DD like mm-hmm. a like a dedicated dri- designated driver, uh, so they don't touch anything. Yeah, like, and not a drop. As much as you know, we don't want to make we don't want to make college seem scary because. Although, you know, new changes in life can be scary. You're going into the real world, and it's the real world is, is yeah. a dangerous place. Like, basically, be responsible. And yeah. uh, make sure that uh, if if you're new to campus and you had to walk a decent way to get to this place and you don't know how to get back, use the GPS on your phone. Yeah. Or, ha- like, again, have someone who's uh, sober enough to, like, help Find your way back. Yeah, designated drivers are very important, too. You definitely, uh, you know, dr- drunk driving is a very big issue. Oh, it's very dangerous. I don't personally know anyone who has, uh, like, who is a victim of it. Because I think most of our friends are good about yeah. that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. But it's, especially in the larger populations and, like, the uh, where things are more spread out by car and not by walking. Mm-hmm. It's a very serious problem. And young yeah. people are dumb. Young people are going to do things like drunk driving and not think of the, the possible risks and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And that's why, uh, that's why when I took driver's ed, I had to see some pretty unfortunate, horrific photos because that's the reality. Of oh it yeah. All. Driver's ed ain't even fun. No, <laughs> no it's not fun. Uh, but yeah, basically, as long as you stay safe, you're prepared. You make sure you're around people, and we don't, you know, we don't condone any sort of, you know, illegal activity like no, yeah. drug use or drinking. But you know, you can't, you can't stop it. College sometimes is college, it happens. It's gonna happen. So, so if, be responsible. If you're gonna partake in anything, you always want to make sure you're, you know, you're taking baby steps with this stuff. You don't want to jump right into something and not know where you're going. Yeah. And um, but basically, that's. You follow these kinds of rules, and you you can have a great time. Honestly, if you're if you're around people you know, if you're having a good time, and you don't even have to really worry about it if you're around friends. It, yeah, it's just a good time. It's a like, good time. That's like the, the kind of we the kind of parties that you and I go yeah, to. Yeah, like over... on average, a party should be a good time. You should have fun. Like you know, if it's if there's music and you want to dance, dance. If you want to just hang out with someone do that it's a great time Mm. it's a great way to just like get to know people and talk and have fun yeah and you know while i hate i i almost said hate i don't hate i don't uh the party scene particularly enjoy the party scene yeah the party scene isn't me but yeah i've I've grown a little less i would uh, say enthusiastic over it yeah i would say though i really encourage people to go out and try try and try and experience you know a good time with some friends go out and if you're afraid of, I know I was, I was afraid of, you know, being around a lot of people and not knowing what kind of situation I was in. Yeah. But, you know, I went to a house party and they had a band playing in, in the basement and I was thinking, oh yeah, I remember, you know, that one. this is, this is not my kind of thing, but I can, I can enjoy myself and have a good yeah. time. I can dance. There was a mosh pit going. I moshed. <laughs> I have never funny. moshed before. I, and, uh, I did not particularly enjoy that party, but uh, for it, it was a good time for the people that were going into it, knowing what they were going in for. Yeah, it was definitely a more down to earth party. Yeah, it wasn't like crazy ridiculous. Like there was bands playing models. and people dancing, but yeah, um, I I know I don't I still don't like that kind of thing. But no. I I got to experience it, and I think I, it helped me open up a little bit more. Yeah, you know, along with me being careful, I went with you guys, you Jonah, all the all, all of my the friends. Guys, yeah. I knew I was around. I was in a safe place around good people, and uh, I had a. I didn't have a great time. I had fun. Yeah. I, I'd say I had a lot of fun, but it's something. I, uh, I, uh, I know I prefer house party, like small friend parties. Small friend parties. You yeah. know, like five, eight people getting together, hanging out. Yeah, that's fun. That's like a, when it's fun to have dedicated people to uh to have fun with. Oh I'd yeah. Say. You know, you hang out at eat every, everyone else's house. You go over places. It's really fun to just hang out over the weekend and. Play video games, talk about, yeah, movie, just, watch movies. Like, maybe. you don't even oh. have to, like, when I, and I feel like what a lot of people associate the word party with is, like, there has to be alcohol. Yeah, involved. no. And, like, 
parties do not have to have alcohol. You can have just like a fun game night or something like that, a movie night. <laughs> That's what we do with pizza. Uh, we go over to uh, Ryan's place and we yeah, play. Yeah, like our uh, friend Ryan's. Uh, what, what's the What's the uh, PS4 game he has? Jack Jackbox games. Jackbox, yeah. Oh my gosh, I love Jackbox. Jackbox is Jackbox. a great party game. Mario Kart, uh, Mario Party, uh, <laughs> Smash Bros. Smash Brothers. <laughs> you know, those are all great party games that you don't have to be drunk to enjoy for. Oh yeah. Drunk for to enjoy. And, you know, a party can just be hanging out. Yeah. Just having a good time with some friends. I mean, I know so, there are a lot of times where. Everyone's over at our dorm, and yeah. we're, like, laying down sleeping and just talking. Oh, there are so many times where people have slept on our floor. It's really weird to, like, oh. even count. It's fun. It's just... Yeah. I, we encourage you to make friends. There was one time where someone was so tired that I gave them my bed for two hours to nap. Oh, yeah. <laughs> was that Mitch, or was that... That was Mitch, yeah. That was Mitch. Yeah, he... Uh, Mitch, if you're listening to this podcast, man, you're a really cool guy. Something that you people... So, a, t- a certain type of people that people will meet in college are the people that don't sleep, that live on two hours of sleep and are fine. Oh my some goodness. people, it's like 40 Crazy. minutes, and they're they're up and about. Yeah, some people can manage, you know, doing so much work, and then other people, you know, they need their sleep. But I if, need my sleep. If you need, if you feel like you are you need your sleep, do not be afraid to break away and get some sleep. Oh, yeah, very important. Take a sleep nap. Sleep is very important. It's help- it, Like, if you don't get enough, your body will suffer. I, I used to never take naps. I, I never. I didn't like it. Middle of the day, I was thinking, "What? Well, I could do work. I could. I could be doing something fun." Now, nah, as soon as I come to college, I'm I like, I'll go to my first couple classes. I'll get back at like eleven, and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna take a solid nap. Yeah, a, a solid hour nap. And you feel great for the oh, rest it's of the day. So good. It's so nice. Whenever my classes are canceled, I come back to the dorm and I sleep. Mm-hmm. It's it's very nice. You need your sleep. Get those nine hours. It. I mean, it's not always nine hours. Maybe not for always. Some, yeah. I live on seven pretty comfortably. Mm-hmm. Six is a little more difficult, but like se- in between seven and nine is a good is a good number. For me, I like to get eight or nine hours of sleep. Very, yeah, usually I like I function much better when I get eight hours at least. I function much better when I get eight. I don't seven. I can function, but I will probably need a nap at some mm-hmm. point during the day, or I'll feel the I'll feel the uh, the what do people call it? Lethargic. No. Well, there, that is the term, but uh, people start to feel like it when it hits you. Oh, like the wall? Yeah. You're like, oh my gosh, I need to sleep right now. Yeah, like when you hit a wall and you're like, oh, there it is. Yeah. There's the crash. Oh, that's usually the two, are you talking about there's like a 2 p.m. feeling? Kind of, like yeah. There's like a feeling usually around later in the day that you're like, oh, I need to sleep. I need a nap. Usually, usually I'll take a nap a little earlier than that, and I'll skip over that feeling. I'll be fine. Yeah. So going well, we went on a crazy tangent there off so parties. What do you love about college uh, life, Corey? Uh, what do I love about college life? Uh, I would have to say, uh, just meeting new people. That's I'm great. I'm constantly surrounded by my friends. I'm constantly surrounded by people. I I really like to have a good time with, e- even in classes. You know, in my in some of the classes I have, I'm around some of my best friends. Like I see Ken, Jerry, Sean, all those guys, all in just video class. And we're all in a group. You and I are all yeah. we're all in a group together, and it's it's fun. It's just awesome, and the creative freedom that we have on campus is amazing. There's so many people I've been able to actually work on projects with, and collaborate with. Like this, for example, this podcast. Yeah, like this thing. This is this is something like you brought up to me. Like, hey, do you want to do this podcast? Yeah, like a couple and weeks it, ago. Like I, a couple weeks ago, even not even maybe a week ago. I was like, hey, was we like, can do yeah, that. Yeah, sure, let's do that. Yeah, and we now we're do- doing it. It's it's awesome, it, and so much in my opinion. When I'm on college, when I'm in college and I'm on the campus, I, I get done so uh, I get so much stuff done, and uh, that's what I really like about it. I think it's being surrounded by so many people who you know creative mind people out of high school. You're going to college to study a profession, and you really want to yeah you want to you want to nail down your craft. Yeah, you want to be good in this profession, and I I just love being surrounded by people who are in the same mindset as me that I want to get good at this thing. Oh yeah. So Joe, yeah. what do you what do you love about college so much, man? I love the thing I love about college is um you really open yourself up to beyond like your uh like your home or mm-hmm. whatever. Like even people that come from places that are very diverse, like New York City or LA or um like even like some parts of Texas or Mexico or whatever, you will always be opened up to like a different part wherever you go Mm -hmm. like um so many times where i had to like break my bolt my break my mold of like what i perceive like people 
to be and like how they function because mm-hmm. i was it's it's kind of here I'm, it's kind of a similar thing i'd say a little more wide because you know you just see more people more often yeah but back at home i hang out with like the same five people yeah and like my my family and stuff like that and they're great people don't get me wrong they're awesome and in high school, it was the same way. Like, you know, there is, I knew more people in high school when I was in high school and, like, I would talk to them. But, you know, I kind of had this solid perception on what I thought people were. And then you come to college, and a lot of those things stay the same, but a, but just a few key changes makes everything different. Oh, yeah, with all the diversity yeah. that you have coming to a college campus, it's people from everywhere. Yeah. And, like, a lot of them can probably... The, because a lot of them might have the same presentation, approach, nature, personality of some of like your closest friends, but the things they talk about and the, how they react to certain things are completely different. And it throws, mm-hmm. it, it can be very jarring. Mm-hmm. Very cool, man. So something that we're going to end every show on is uh, tips that you have, tips that we have for uh campus for incoming college students and even this will be also in the interviews whoever i interview they'll have tips for incoming college students tips and tricks so i'm gonna ask you joe yeah do you have any tips for incoming college students something they should keep Uh, in mind before they come on the the campus besides the uh aforementioned keep the schedule (laughs) besides everything we just told them (laughs) resources and keep your uh schedule on tight um one tip i could probably recommend is go to try and separate because some people are different with this, but I noticed for me this works very well. Separate your place of sleep and entertainment from your place of work. Yeah. So for a lot of people, they do everything in their room, which is fine. Some people work best in the same environment that they live in, and that works great. But for some people, your performance dwindles when, it, or not even so much dwindles, but it greatly increases, and your productivity and your quality just go up. If you go to the library, yeah, you I can definitely feel it. You don't have to use the resources. Just like get up from your room, go to a place where you can feel productive and do your work. Yeah, I think that's a very good. Uh, that's a very good tip to give people because I know I do a lot of work in my dorm room. Yeah, but I've definitely noticed that when I go to the lab to edit something, or when I go to the computer lab to like draw something for my art class, or to edit a video for the video class. Yeah, I definitely notice I'm able to sit down and focus. Instead of, you know, oh, maybe I'll go to YouTube and look and at a video. a video. Maybe I'll go to Twitter and check what people are saying. Yeah. it's it's a, It seems like I'm in a mindset that is, I have to get work done. I'm in a work room. I would also recommend, uh, I know some people would probably be against this for sleeping because they're probably naturalists, but don't be afraid to take melatonin or z if you screw up your sleeping schedule and you need to get it back on track. Right. Because for some people, they can't do the dial back an hour a day thing. Some people just don't have that discipline. Mm-hmm. I don't. So if I royally screw up my sleeping schedule and I need to get, you know, if I, and I need to get back on a regimen so that I can be energized for class and stuff, go to Walmart or any pharmaceutical store, buy z or NyQuil or melatonin. It's like $10. Take a, take a, a dose of it an hour before you need, want to go to bed. Do that for a couple days, boom, sleeping schedule fixed. Right, and you, you don't want to become reliant on this no, thing either. No, you don't. Don't take it every night. Nah, this is for like quick, just, you know, if you can't get a good night's sleep, that's what z is for. Yeah. You got a cold, you can't sleep, or, you know, you're just, you're just, you can't find, you can't get to sleep just yeah. because of either, you know, maybe stress or something. something maybe take like it one night to try and get back into schedule. Two nights, three, I don't know how many specifically. It's like, but. if it depends on some people. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't want to get too reliant on it because uh, one of my friends was telling me about a girl who could not go to sleep without any kind of alcohol in her. So that's, when she yeah, got, that like when she got dry, uh, she had to take NyQuil because NyQuil has like 10% yeah. alcohol. Because I'm a, I'm a bit of a more naturalist that way. I don't like yeah. relying on medication. To yeah, do no, it's, I, I try to avoid it when I can because mm-hmm. I don't want to have to spend money to sleep. But there oh, are yeah. times when... You know, I'm stressed out that I screwed up my sleeping schedule. And then when I try to go to sleep or I might sleep during the day and wake up at night and it's like, oh, this is not right. Right. All right. So my tip, your tips. my tip for incoming college students is do things. Do I would things. say get out of your comfort zone. 
Do something that might make you a little bit uncomfortable. Go to clubs. You go to clubs. Sign up for things. We've got a show on clubs coming up. We got an episode, a, a noobcast episode on clubs coming oh, up. Yes. We're gonna interview. Uh, we're gonna interview someone about club stuff. I don't want to say his name yet because yet. I want it to be you know a little surprise. A little surprise. He's a really cool dude. He's a really cool dude. I like him a lot. Uh, but. I'd say go out, get out of your comfort zone, do things, because I definitely would be such an introverted person Oh yeah. if I had not gone to a couple parties, if I had not joined a couple clubs on campus, if I had not started meeting people, because the last thing you want is to come to college, at, be lonely, and... And, just, and just, just, like, the thing that I would hate the most is if my college life boiled down to get up, class, mm-hmm. work... Go back to room, work. Yeah. It would be so regimented Isolate, and ugly. Sleep, deal with roommate, sleep. Yeah. You know, that'd be a terror. To me, that's a terrible life. Mm-hmm. And living in living in such a modernized day, we are so connected, interconnected. Yeah. Networking is so important. And it's easy, too. I would say meet people. Find people in your major, outside of your major. And just... Talk to them. Wor- talk to them. Do things with them. Work with them. Make a podcast with them. Do something. Like, film something. Make a band. I don't know. Yeah, I know so many people who are in bands on campus. Yeah. And, you know, they've got talent. That's another thing, though, I should mention. is um, I heard a quote recently, and it was a very interesting quote. And it was, I'm going to butcher this, but it was some somewhere along the lines of, everyone has something about them. That's unique. That's u- v- unique and special. Everyone's got a secret hidden talent. And if you start looking for other people's hidden like talents, quirks. people will become very interesting. You'll want to meet new people. Yeah. It'll it'll become less of a, you'll become less introverted and it'll help you to just realize everyone's got something special about them. And if you and them work on something together, you could, you could make something together and create like a very new friendship, a very unique personal friendship. Yeah. And if you, and don't be afraid to do favors for people. Or ask people to do favors for you because that's kind of like that also helps build a relationship too. Oh, yeah. I cannot count how many times I've done, <laughs> like I've done favors for Corey and he's oh, yeah. done favors for me. Vice versa, it's so much video work that we've done oh, for yeah. each other. So much, even this podcast. I asked Joe pretty much on a favor if he just helped me out with this podcast. He's like, sure, yeah, yeah sounds like fun. It's, it's it's a way to uh, it's a way to further like spend your time because mm-hmm. doing the same regimen over and over again is tiring you need to change it up oh yeah so joe this podcast i think went pretty well for the first episode i think so too we're coming up we should start uh we should, we should start, start wrapping, wrapping up. up and uh so i, I want to thank everyone Just who's listening to this point yeah who, th- thank you for listening uh we're looking forward to future podcasts and helping inform you guys about everything that goes along you know, with learning about college and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. So this is the College Noobcast. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you in the next episode.